Hi, how's it going? Charles Botenston, Botenston Properties International. We're here in the office about to go over some numbers. Um, this is one of those things that I've said it multiple times is that by the number, by the time the numbers come out, so say Q1, so the numbers come out, or the numbers are compiled, and then they come out, and then the media actually picks up on it, and then they report it, and then you see it, you're talking about 30, 45, even 60 days later. That's the biggest thing, depending on the size of the report. If it's a quarterly report, it's gonna take longer. If it's a monthly report, it's gonna take shorter. But that's the thing is that they have, you have the quarterly in the monthly reports, but you're already lagged on the time frame, and Manhattan literally moves so fast, and I've been saying this for a while, is that it's sluggish, but not sluggish in the fact that there's so much inventory, but sluggish in the fact that you, you literally have less transactions. So back in the day, three months ago, literally you'd have a home come on the market and then you had a buyer. You'd have a home come on the market and a buyer. So the amount of transactions have gone down, so you'd have, here's a home on the market, here's a buyer, Here's a home on the market. Here's a buyer. So the amount of transactions has dwindled. So it's actually, the transactions have gone, gone down, which makes for a sluggish real-time report. You know, Manhattan is gonna say otherwise because it's quarter, quarter over quarter. Um, Brooklyn, you'll see the numbers in Brooklyn. Brooklyn is definitely a little bit more gloomy, but Manhattan, quarter over quarter, we're up 5%. So in other words, Q1 over Q4, we're up 5%. This is the average sales price, we're up 5%. This is the crazy part, is year over year, quarter one this year, quarter one of 2015, quarter one 2016, year over year, 18%, 18%. So what can we say? Number one is towards the end of last year, it was insane. In quarter three of last year, it was insane. Everything was going very quickly off the market. Um, obviously you can see, so the average, this is the best benchmark to put it against, is that the average price of a Manhattan apartment year over year, through the recession, out of the recession, through dips and you know, huge increases, averages year over year, 6%. So we're below the quarter over quarter, 6% rate. So in other words, 6% uh, rate of return year over year. Um, obviously 18%, huge influx. What does that mean? That we're gonna have a slowing, which I mentioned before, of the amount of transactions. New development, uh, year over year, you're up 60% in pricing. It's very well known that the ultra, ultra high end, like 10 million, 20 million, $250 million apartment uh, is being you know, thought of right now which is you know, obviously uh, pretty insane, but 60%. So that means that you, and listen, no better place than look at 157. That place has been hit really hard. They still have a huge amount of homes. That was the original uh, building on Billionaire's Row. Then you had 432 Park, and then you have downtown. You literally have a massive influx of ultra luxury apartments. We're gonna see a huge slowdown and actually price cutting. We've already seen it in 157, that beautiful building where it had the crane that collapsed on uh, during Sandy moving over to Brooklyn not that exciting um, quite gloomy quarter over quarter from quarter uh, four to quarter one of this year down 1.6 percent uh, year over year from quarter one of 2015 to quarter one of 2016 so year over year you're only up six percent so that's the average. Like I said, the average price is 6%. This is, this is, it's actually 6.2, so it's slightly above the average price of a New York City home. So what does that mean to you? You know, these numbers, and I'll give you the rental numbers. The rental numbers, um, I can tell you right now is, I, I just had an investor, you know, we managed, I don't know, like uh, 15, 20 apartments, and each year we have to come up with new rent. So this year, I, I told the investor, I said, listen, I'm like, it, it my rent barely went up percentage-wise. It went up only about like 1%, uh, which is a very small increase. It was like 1.5%. And, and I told them, the investor, I said, listen, you know, let's only, uh, let's only raise it about 2 2.5%. And they agreed with me. And the reason being is that when you have a slowdown in the amount of sales, that adversely affect or, or parallel uh, affects the amount of rental pricing that you can garner. So this is a perfect example, and this is over New York City, this is in Brooklyn, Manhattan, but this is over the average rental price quarter over quarter is up 3.3%. You know, that, that's about right. Um, that's a little high, but this is the, the concerning one is that it's 1.5% year over year. So that's what I was talking about before is that mine went up only one to one, one and a half percent, which is on average here. Uh, that's the average sales price. 
Uh, the list, the vacancy rate is actually year over year down, or I'm sorry, month over month down to under 2%, which is very good. Um, that, that's a huge indication of how many students, interns, new jobs are being created, how many condos are coming down the market, because there's a lot of high-end, like I was saying, high-end investors that are buying these big, beautiful homes, and then they're just literally taking and parking money there. And uh, I don't know if you heard recently, but the government's cracking down on the amount of LLCs that buy homes. They actually have to list a person so there's no money laundering, uh, which you know you agree with. You know if it's coming outside the country. So what does that mean to you? Um, the amount of transactions is going going down. And one of the questions actually asked about the election. I've been saying it for a while is that this is one of the last years because interest rates are so low. They're literally right around inflation. Before 2016, it was below inflation, which is incredible. Uh, now it's right around inflation. Who's to say what's going to happen? Obviously, we have a huge amount of months, you know, seven, eight months before the election and then after the election. I've been saying it. If you want to do any transaction, now is the time to do it, especially if you're going to buy because you don't know where the interest rates are going to go. You can't really go that much lower, especially if we hit something in 2017. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm still bullish on selling because I'm on both sides of the transaction. And as long as you market it, market it correctly and you have the right price, it's going to go like that. And just to uh, go back to the sales of Manhattan is that the average sales price is over $2 million. So that should give some indication that Manhattan is going nowhere. And one of the questions, so go to the Q&A video, is that one of the questions is about the, uh, should I do a co-op in Brooklyn or a condo in Manhattan? I'm more bullish in Manhattan because Brooklyn, you can always go further out. They're not really going up as much. Manhattan, there's really no raw land to actually go up. Uh, and it's very expensive, raw land and building up. So if you have any questions, let me know. Again, it's Charles Boatenston for Boatenston Properties International. As always, we're never too busy for your, any of your, <laughs> We are never too busy for any of your referrals. Have a fantastic day.